What you got there? Turbo, what you got? What is that? Why don't you show us what you got? Come on, Turbo. Come on. What's in Turbo's mouth? Oh, that's great. Like he found himself a chunk of wood. You can have it. Go get it. Go on. Oh no, things were going so smoothly. He's been so calm. I hid the jolly ball, but he found it. Apparently he didn't hide it well enough. You better keep that thing away from the tripod. You better watch it. Anyways, hey, what's up garden friends? Jeff here, how's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great. Came outside this morning into the garden, had my clippers in hand and barrels and buckets ready to fill. Wanted to get going on the garden cleanup, start cutting things back and getting things looking tidy. And then I remembered, oh no, 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 no. March garden tour, haven't done it yet. March garden tour is always the first tour of the year and I usually like to go ahead and just leave things in their messy natural states. So we can get a more accurate depiction of how things did throughout the winter time, what worked, what didn't, things that maybe carried over through last year. And then this is also when I spitball ideas and just kind of daydream about maybe some of the projects I might like to get done in the garden this year for 2022. It's only been spring for a few days, so there just isn't much to look at that looks very pretty. And things are still messy, because I'm just getting going on the garden cleanups. I don't need to hear any of that. Everything's a mess. I know, I just said it. Shut up. So I'll start over here with what's the ginger and dwarf palmetto bed. Again, not looking beautiful. Here's how things carried through in the winter time. Obviously no action yet from the gingers. There's a huge clump of Hedicium flaming torches over here. They don't usually start popping up until around May. Ground temperatures normally need to hit around 70-ish before I start to see any action from those. So we're still a ways off from that. The Sable Miners though, there's one, two, three, and a fourth right here. They did uh, actually pretty well this winter. No, they don't look that hot, however, I didn't protect them this year. Not at all. Well, okay, there was one night that I threw a frost cloth over them back in December and the wind just blew it right off and I was like, you know what? No, I don't want to do this anymore. The whole point of planting the more hardy palms is to have them carry through unprotected. Can we really call them hardy if we have to wrap them in lights and all kinds of things? We may be more hardy, but as far as I'm concerned, calling it hardy means that you can just throw some mulch on it, walk away and leave it. So that's what I wanted to do here, partially so I can give more accurate representation of how these palm trees do here during the winter time. Here in, I always need to point this out, I always forget, in St. Louis, right on the border is 6A, 6B. This year we had a zone 7 winter. The coldest temperature my little thermometers out here picked up was 0.8, I think was the lowest temperature. So it was actually a fairly <laughs> relatively mild winter. So this Sable Miner right here. Can you even see it? Probably not. Not looking all that hot, but again, no protection. And this one turned out to be a favorite for the puppies, for Turbo and his cousin Louie. They were running around over here and I caught them ripping it to pieces. So that's what happened with that one. Center growth, still nice and firm. So that will grow up and flush out and look more like this one back here. Just a little baby. Tiny little baby Sable Miners. And then there are the bigger ones back here. Those are the ones I was more concerned about, but they really, they did okay. There's some damage, but considering it got down to zero degrees and we had many, many, many low temperatures that stayed below 20 this winter, like we had extended weeks on end where it didn't even go up above freezing. I'd say they did all right. Got some dead stuff to cut out, but the center growth inside of both of these over here still looking pretty good. All the bulbs that I planted last fall are starting to come up. Well, I think all of them. I'm actually having trouble remembering how many I planted. Part of the fun of planting bulbs, right? When spring comes around, we're like, oh yeah, I forgot I did that. Well, that's what's going on here. I believe I had some of the, I don't remember what they're called, really big daffodils back here with a whole bunch of, I don't remember, pink. There was some kind of pink daffodil over here in the front. We'll get to be surprised together, see how those look. Some alliums coming up over here. They ended up getting kind of scattered around. The puppies dug up one and uh, it, the ground was too frozen to really get it back down in deep. So it's not coming back, but two of them are still there and looking pretty good. The needle palm, looking good, no protection. There's gonna be some stuff that needs to be trimmed off of it, but that's just kind of the way things go when you plant palm trees in zone six. This sable right here does have more damage than the other, but again, the center growth that's in there is still nice and green, so I'm not worried about it. Not ideal, but they'll be okay. Over here, I have the Temple of Bloom. 
uh, Seven Suns flower that I'm just now noticing the dog appears to have chewed off some of those branches. Here's how tall it was right here. It's just starting to flush out with some leaves and there's the rest of it down there. I'm going to be flagging the garden, putting those little orange flags all around the perimeter of this garden bed and the garden bed down there and walking him around with a leash and teaching him not to go into these flower beds. He was a little bit young for that last year and uh, then during the winter time there was snow and stuff on the ground it was harder to differentiate the perimeters but he's old enough now he should learn fairly quickly that's going to be i think the biggest obstacle with him this year is teaching him that he can't just run around and destroy plants should be interesting there will probably be more losses because of the puppy i know he doesn't look like a puppy he's only nine months old he's just freaking gigantic random lilies they're starting to pop up i love when those pop up they come out of like this weird sort of like mucus sack. I know that sounds gross, but it looks really cool. It's like they have some slimy coating that they develop and they burst out of it. When things warm up, those are going to be very big this year because they're already looking pretty tall. This mulch mound here is about 24 inches deep, I would say. No action from the bananas yet. Not on either side, which isn't surprising. It's still kind of early for that. Now, there could definitely be something going on down inside of those mulch piles, but I don't know. I'm also just now noticing that it would appear that Turbo came in here. Oh, you know what? He had a play date yesterday. That's why things are in shambles. He and his cousin Louie were here, and I'm going to have to walk Louie around, too. That's the other dog I was talking about and teach him to stay out of the garden. But look at this. This is just all kinds of shredded and destroyed in here. Okay, well, hey, good thing the bananas are down inside that mulch pile and they weren't able to do anything to them. Have a whole bunch of beautiful daffodils over here. Aren't they just looking gorgeous? So happy and cherry. I have this cage back here that was around these really all winter. I planted these up and then realized that I needed to protect them in some way, shape or form. I had planted these up with some of the Spoma mix down in there and whenever I use that, the dogs just go nuts for it. They jump in, they start digging it up. It's just, it's a very stinky product and dogs love that. And again, the puppy was much more puppy back then when I planted these. So that's why that cage is back there. I just moved that out a couple of days ago and I still have it sitting there because I wanted to wait and see and make sure he wasn't going to mess with them. But he hasn't bothered these at all, which is good because they're not good for dogs. You don't want them chewing on these. The thing with this daffodil clump though, is that this was supposed to be a extended mix. So it was supposed to be a mix of bulbs that would have a succession of blooms. Blooms that started very early and then some, so you'd have like, I think it said three months, or maybe it was two months of blooms with them. And I put them all in one spot. I originally got these planted upon my hill behind me, but they weren't separated out or labeled in, at all to know which ones were which. So I went ahead and just put them all in one spot and figured I would lift them and then move them which isn't ideal to do with bulbs but their daffodils are pretty tough they should be able to take it so that i could plant them up where i want them to get that succession <laughs> to get that succession of blooms spread out and placed properly so that i have this big area where i'm planting them so i'm to look somewhat naturalized and have these various spots where there would be multiple flowers going at different times. Anyways, I put them all in one spot so that I could see which ones would do what, when, and move them out accordingly. However, it's looking like they're pretty much all blooming right now. There aren't very many that are still coming up. They're pretty much all up. I sucked my hand down in there and felt around for any bulbs that hadn't come up. I'm thinking that they sent me a bag of bulbs that were all the same. Uh, we will see. There are some that have bloomed and some that are still coming up, but this is within like a two week time period, not two months. So that's fine. It's okay. They're really pretty. I will order more that are a later season bloom from someone else who can more accurately label and ship out their plants. The other stable miners, the other dwarf palmetto palms over here, they have much less damage than the others, but this spot is far more protected. This is where the snow melts first. It's a nice little warm corner here. The gingers, there's I think four clumps of gingers over here. The Elizabeth, which is pink, the Flaming Torch, and there are some others mixed in the mix there. And I don't, I don't know how they did. We just have to wait and see. It's still too early to tell. The main focus over here that I get concerned about are the sable miners, these scrub palms. And again, looking fine. They have some stuff to cut out of them, but you can see nowhere near as much as the others do. Oh, and there's some little baby needle palms 
tucked in back here. They look okay. Have some weeding that needs to be done. It's already that time of year. I have to get on top of the lace vines right away. If I don't, they take over and devour absolutely everything. I have some black bamboo in there. These are just little bits that are left over from a clump that I had in here years ago, and I'm leaving it. I would prefer it not be in the front of the garden bed right here. Originally, it was planted down over there, and it crept its way over here. And uh, I, I over pruned it. I over dug up the pieces and it started to die off. This is still here. So I'm going to leave this probably for several years until it's reestablished itself and then relocate it. If I do any more cutting or pruning or hacking on it, I might lose that plant altogether. I'll go in and cut the dead stuff out, but that little bit right there of roots that's left, I want to make sure to leave that there and let it do its thing. I know I'm showing a lot of just mulch. <laughs> it's because there are normally plants here, but again, it's March. Nothing to see here right now. There are normally bikini teeny elephant ears in here. They probably did fine. They don't really need much protection. They're super cold hardy. But again, it's way too soon to tell. I was starting to work over here. Start to pull out the dead bits of blue dune grass. And that's when I was like, oh wait, I need to stop. Knew I needed to get it done, but I also remember I needed to do the garden tour so we can see the mess. And then next month have a much nicer contrast to everything. That needs to be cut up and cut out, but it's all starting to pop up and come out. I love that dune grass. I would never plant it in an area that doesn't have some sort of solid perimeter because it will take over. But when it has a border, a nice harsh border, something to really help control it, it ends up growing up so beautifully. It's more like, I don't know, bushy and full. And it has that bluey greenish foliage with those pretty seed heads that move it. It's just lovely. I, this is, I feel ridiculous spending much time looking at this mess, but this is just March. <laughs> Give it some time gonna fill out and look absolutely beautiful here in about a month or so. Tell you nice roses they're flushing out looking well I was gonna say they're looking pretty they're not looking pretty they will soon though. It looks like they all made it through the winter there's one growth back here it's gonna be hard to see but that didn't do as well but overall the rest of them are looking pretty good. No action out of the summer sweets yet out of the Cleethras they're still they're still doing their winter thing now over here okay I'm not really going to show this area it's turned into a poop patch for turbo it's like I don't know the grass is right there but this is Whatever, a whole bunch of hardy gingers in here, gingerbread myogas and hardy begonias and some hostas in here. And again, nothing to see yet. Okay, on to some greener, more prettier things. One of my favorite spots in the garden this time of year, the laurel hedge, the skip whorls. This all got planted up, I don't know, three years ago, I think? Maybe four years ago. <laughs> here goes Turbo, right through the bushes. One of my favorite additions to the garden. They stayed nice and green all winter long. They put out these beautiful white flowers, which aren't, on them yet, but you can see the little buds started there. Teeny tiny little buds starting to come out. They smell nice. The pollinators love them when they're in flower. It adds so much privacy. And it's just, it's a very lush plant for a privacy hedge. I normally think of like boxwoods and things that have finer leaves when it comes to hedging. There's nothing wrong with a boxwood hedge. I love a boxwood hedge, but this just has a lushness to it that I very much appreciate. It's more full. I like the color of the foliage. It's just broadleaf evergreens in general. Those are my jam. I like how they look. And they've done a good amount of growing over the last few years. They're already starting to send up new growth from the very tops. So I'll try and find another angle that looks better, but they can put on 24 inches of growth a year. And last year I'd say they probably put on about 15, maybe 18 inches. The year before that was maybe a foot at most. So this year I'm hoping we can push more towards that 24 inch because I want these to get up a few feet higher before I start to prune on them. I really want this to fill out more before I start making any cuts on the plants. See, so lush and so green. Makes me so happy. There is a big gap here. There's a pipe in the ground there, so I couldn't plant one right there, so that's why there's a gap there. Another reason I would like for them to go ahead and fill out some more so that gap can close up, because it bothers me, it drives me crazy. And just below, the butterburrs, Pedicis japonicus. There's Pedicis japonicus variegatus down here, and then the other one, I can't remember the name of it. I'm just going to say Curly Q or Gigantium. One of those. There's variegated ones and then ones that aren't variegated. They don't look like much right now. But they come up nice and early. That's one of the things I like about them is that when not much else is going on in the garden, these start popping up usually around early March. And they start off with really neat little flower heads that are almost all about done. So I don't know if there's any I can show you. I'll see. You can kind of see one right there. Some more over here. That one's kind of neat looking, isn't it? Just fun little alien-like flowers. Really neat. I mean, look at them. You can see them scattered about and flopped all over the place. A plant that very quickly naturalizes and takes over an area. You need to come in here and pluck them out from this little pathway before they get much bigger. And again, it's not much to look at right now, but in a few weeks, this is going to be full of great big 
broad leaves. It's going to be absolutely beautiful, and I cannot wait to get that color back over here. Turbo's friends outside. Turbo and Dude. You see these two? Aren't they just adorable? I love that he has a puppy friend next door. They're almost the same age, just a couple months off from each other. Mimosa! It's, well, it's too early. There's nothing to talk about with this tree yet. Well, mimosa doesn't start pushing out leaves normally until things get pretty toasty outside. Kind of like a Rose of Sharon. No, no, not really. They come out a little bit earlier than that, but you get what I'm saying. Need some heat first. Buckswood bonsais. Looking good. They need a top off. I think the squirrels have done some digging in their pots, but they overwintered just fine. I keep those down in a leaf pile back here behind some of these pots. When it gets really cold out, I just pulled those out probably a month or so ago and brought them up here. Grandma's death bench is still here. I know I need to throw it away. You may not know what I'm talking about if you're new here. So this glider was my grandma's and uh, she had it out on her sun deck. It was an addition they put on their house. They were school teachers, so putting an addition on their house was a big deal. They were so proud of it and they loved it so much. And when she passed away, I brought the glider home because it reminded me of her. And then a few years ago, found out that apparently grandma died on there. And that's why I call it grandma's death bench. Get good band name. It's all rusted, it looks nasty. I need to get rid of it. I just haven't been able to bring myself to, you know what though? I'm gonna get rid of it for two years. I'll go up there, get rid of it right now. Oh, that looks so different. I, I, it's fine. It's good. It's good. Change is okay. Nothing wrong with change. You think you're being my helper? You getting sticks? You getting sticks? That's a big one. You better be careful with that. So they, <laughs> this, there it is. It's happening right now. They grab sticks and they pass them back and forth through the fence to each other. This is so stinking cute. I love them so much. You can kind of see them doing it over there. Passing sticks back and forth to each other. So cute. Okay, so there is something that needed to be done for a long time. Glad to have that done. This entire area is getting a makeover this year. I know I talked about that last year, but then I got the puppy and I didn't want to go planting a lot of shrubbery up here. You saw it. There's like a game trail up here from where they run back and forth with each other. So I'm glad I didn't do the planting up here I had talked about last year where I was thinking about putting Akubas along this fence line, which are kind of pricey only marginally hardy here. Very beautiful plants though, uh, but that th it wouldn't have worked out well. I've been playing around with the idea of in the middle of this area where there's this wall here and then the fence, either putting a row of these Skywalker boxwoods, which are very beautiful boxwoods. They grow like 30 inches a year. Very, very, very fast growing plants. Just, I want like a hedge of some sort right here and on the other side of this staircase right there so that I'm not looking right at that fence. Just, I want another wall of green here. And something that's relatively inexpensive that I can get at a smaller size because digging up here, total nightmare. Anything that gets planted up here above this wall, usually you have to use a pickaxe to dig the holes. There's a couple feet of gravel that extends out behind this wall that handles all the drainage, goes down into French drains, which run into more drains that are under here that run out to a storm sewer because this yard right here, my yard, handles all the drainage for all the houses up here on this hill. So all the water that comes down here has to be controlled through the top of this. And, down here so there's not as much planting space as you would think which is fine not every spot has to be filled with plants but i just think a nice line of green plants up there would look really pretty and then the hydrangea trees i mean that's that's just what they look like this time of year these are the strawberry vanilla hydrangeas paniculatas they get very large they don't fit over here anymore i talked about that some last year one the sun has changed as the trees have grown so they're like just barely getting enough sun to grow and look beautiful but they're still growing so much that it's actually kind of hard to walk over here, which is dangerous. And I would like to open the space up some more. You can see I have a lot of pottery sitting around over here because the spot's somewhat sheltered during the winter. So I moved some things over here to keep them protected when it's really cold outside. So all this is going to be gone. I may replace these planters right here and do something different with this spot. But my main thing right now is the hydrangea trees, they're going to go somewhere else that's more appropriate, I think. And the same thing with the major Wheeler honeysuckles. One of my favorite plants I have out here. They have the most gorgeous flowers on them. I had a arch arbor that went over the steps here. It was very cheap. It was like $25 off of Amazon. It fits the space okay though, but it didn't last long because, you know, $25 off of Amazon. In order to keep the vine going over here, I would need to get an arbor built for this spot. And it's 96 inches from where that would need to be 96 inches wide. I can't really find any that are affordable, that are pre-made. I could have one made myself or I, I could do it myself. I don't want to though, but I could. It's not that complicated. 
the problem would be getting holes dug big enough to put some concrete down to really hold those supports in place because I mentioned there's a lot of gravel in there and there's pipes. So I decided last year that what I want to do is dig these up right around now in the next week or two. I'm going to move both of these vines over to the gate over here. So there will be a vine planted on each side of that fence. I think they'll do better over there. There's more sun. It'll add some privacy in those open spots where the fence is along the driveway and they'll flower more profusely too. And then I could plant something small on each side of these steps. This is, it's going to be kind of a blank palette up here once I move those and then that bench is gone. There really isn't anything else planted up here other than the buckeye. There's a red buckeye over here that I absolutely love. One of my favorite little trees that's out here. I got this thing, it's just a tiny little twig many years ago. It's not doing much right now. You can kind of see some leaves on it. I like the leaf shape. It's very chefleura ish And then they have these beautiful red spiky flowers that come out of them that the hummingbirds just absolutely love. Another plant I had considered transplanting because between the time that I planted it and now the sun has changed a lot, but it did a lot of growing last year, like a lot. It's hard to tell because there's so much bare wood, but it's all the way up right about there. So it's probably about eight feet tall now, and it's tallest spot. So I think I should probably just leave it and let it do its thing. Right? Probably? I don't know. We'll see. I'll think about that. I also don't really know where I'd put it. So might need to stay there. So the overall theme for this spot this year is that I want to just get rid of most of this stuff, move it, relocate it, clean it up. I want a nice clean line and a clean wall with a hedge of some sort behind there. Maybe a couple of tall slender planters on each side of the staircase with something simple in it. Nothing big that the wind can blow over, but I don't know. We'll see about that. Another reason that I need to move these hydrangea trees is because I need these pots. These pots are what I need to transplant my mule palms into. They're nice and big, sturdy pots, and those mule palms, let's go have a look at them. They're looking pretty rough. All right, here are the mule palms. It's actually looking much better since I brought it outside. If you watch the vlogs and follow along with those, you know that I was on the fence as to when to move these out. They can take a lot of cold, but I thought things might be different this year because the growth space was so much warmer with the new heater I had installed. And I was thinking that, you know, going from being in the 70s and 80s to just straight outside where the nighttime temps are still dipping into the 20s and teens, at least a couple weeks ago, they were when I moved these outside. That might be a bit much shock for them. So I just lowered the temperature in the garage for a few days in the growth space and then move them out on a warm day and they have been okay. They haven't skipped a beat. This one's actually even started to open up more and flush out more and look more full. So there's a good thing I moved it out. However, both of them, there's another one. I'll show you the other one soon. This is the one that was looking the most rough. They both need a repot very badly. They've been in these containers for about two years. The mule palms are very, very, very vigorous palm trees. They grow fast. So uh, they need, a, a, I would say I want to bump these up to probably a 30 inch container. And uh, I have those two over there that the hydrangea trees are in, so I figured why not just move the hydrangea trees into something else in more light where they'll be more happy. Then I can use those pots for the mule palms. I think they'll like that. It's warm enough to do that just yet, but in about a month, it will be. I think they'll really appreciate having some space to spread those roots out. Okay, so now we understand what's going on with those pots over there and why I need to do the shuffle, the hydrangeas we talked about, and I need those pots for the mule palms. I'm gonna move that honeysuckle and just try and get a nice clean edge in here, a clean line. Ultimately, what I would love for the spot, if we're just daydreaming here, would be to have that hedge sort of centered between this wall and that fence there. Then on each side of that staircase that's over here, you can come over and actually have a look at it since I'm talking about it. Yeah, see, it's looking so rough over here. I just want to get it looking nicer. I'd love to have an acanthus summer beauty on each side of these steps, right in that little corner where the honeysuckles are. One right there and one right there. They have a beautiful sort of rosette type shape to them. They're very large and full with these deeply lobed, dark green, glossy foliage. They look kind of like a bipinadifidum, somatophyllum, philodendron, whatever you want to call it, but they're perennial, hardy to zone six, and they put up these beautiful tall spires of sort of a mauve and purpley colored flower, colory, <laughs> purple colored flower. I think that that would look beautiful on each side of those steps there. They'd be more short and have a more mounted shape to them. They're not always the easiest plants to come by, though. I haven't seen them around at the nurseries for a few years. Well, I saw one last year at a nursery, but it was $120. So I didn't do that. I needed two of them anyways. But if I can find them, that's what I would love to have go on each side of those steps. And then uh, I was thinking this year, probably it might be fun to put a row of caladiums right front and center along the front of this wall from where that bayberry is, this plant that's arching over here all the way down. 
Wouldn't that be beautiful? I have tons of caladium bulbs. I think that would just be so pretty right at the edge of that wall. And, oh, what would be really cool would be to have right behind that a solid row of Begonia grandis, the hardy begonias. They get about 20 to 24 inches tall. They're perennial in zone 6 and up. They have a nice glossy foliage and they have little dainty flowers that dangle down from them. They're pricey though. I don't usually see them for a very affordable cost, so to fill in from basically right here all the way down this wall, well not all the way down, but to that bayberry over there, it'd be pretty pricey. But some of the fun of gardening is how you just have to piece and patch things together. These don't always happen in one quick project. What you doing? What are you looking at? He's looking at one of the neighbor's dogs that's very far away and he's got one right here that wants to play with him, but all he's looking at is the one that it's always about what you can't get, right? Your friend's right behind you. What are you doing? All right, go say hi to your other friends. And again, I'm not saying everything I just said is actually going to happen, but I would like to at least get started and moving in that direction. I think the first thing to do would be get those honeysuckles out of there and move those hydrangea trees. I'm looking forward to getting that done. I'll probably get started on that this weekend. Another needle palm. That one's been in the ground for like a decade. No protection. It's always just done fine. Well, that's not true. It actually used to be a lot bigger. This was a full-size clump, and the majority of the clump died off in an ice storm and I want to say 2014 perhaps. It's kind of hard to get a shot of it when I'm talking about this plant back here, but the there's a little remainder in there that's done well, no protection. I think having this spruce above it has helped. The maple, Japanese maple bonsai, not much to look at just yet, but it's starting to swell. It's gonna start filling out with some pretty little flowers here fairly soon. Table full of spring annuals, cannot wait to get those planted up. Windmill palms. Yeah, they've looked better, but you know, they spent almost all winter outside with no protection in a pot. So I think they're actually looking pretty good. This one needs some new soil. I'm having a lot of trouble keeping it hydrated, so I think that's why we got this floppiness going on in there. It's also been blown over a few times. I laid some bricks down underneath it to help it stand up. Here's another one that has had more protection. Looking a little bit better than the other one, huh? All right, they're sturdy, tough palm trees. I'm not worried about it. They just need some time and some water, and they'll be looking pretty good. I'm, you know, I'm watering them. I'm not just letting them dry out and desiccate, but it's not the time of year where you can really water all that heavily without running the risk of root rot, because the nighttime temperature is still pretty cold. There are some of my bigger, more mature ones over here that are very backlit, but you get the idea. They made it through winter just fine. They did spend probably in total maybe a month inside. That's not bad. Zone six is pretty good. And my other needle palms over here. This is the first winter, I think, that I did not protect them at all. Not one bit. Threw a frost cloth on them one time, just like I mentioned with the sable miners, but the wind blew them right off. That's why there's pots everywhere, because they were holding down that frost cloth. And they pulled through it all just fine. I would say no damage. There's, there's a tiny bit of burn on them. A little bit, but not too bad, not much at all. I've talked about these before when it comes to winter protection with the shrubs and how I do tend to still cover them, or I used to cover them when it would go below 10 degrees Fahrenheit just because they grow so slowly. So minimizing any damage is a good thing, right? Because just the fewer setbacks, the better the plant's going to look the next year. But eventually comes a time when you have to say, okay, that's enough, we need to really see if you can make it through. And they did, they pulled through just fine. Very big, bushy looking palms too. Here's a little size comparison next to the dog if you want to see that. I have some topsoil over here that I need to spread out in an area just down the ways where the dogs have been digging some things up. There's a detail that wasn't all that exciting. And then I have some more of the cold hardy plants. Turbo? Really? I don't know if you'll, you you can't see it. He crawled inside the tripod. That's not useful. Don't do that. Some of the more cold hardy tropicals I moved out a few weeks ago, but I've left them in the gorilla cart so I can move them in and out of the sun to just acclimate them more slowly. And they're doing pretty good so far. I think it's actually probably safe at this point to go ahead and move them someplace where they can sit and stay. I don't really think I need to be moving these around anymore. The one palm does have some damage in the middle. It got left out to 13 degrees, but I've been treating it with fungicide and it seems like things are still firm in there. So I think it's okay. The Mediterranean fan palm, if you are wondering. Windmill palms. Looking forward to starting some pruning on those. I want to wait just a little bit longer, make sure that temperatures are nice and mild. Over here, I've got all kinds of fun, colorful pots laid out and ready to get filled up with annuals and tropicals, maybe some perennials. I have a new pot over there I'm going to do a fun little bonsai in. Things are just, things are just uh, starting to get rolling. I'm very excited about it. Oh, and the peach trees. Didn't those come out just lovely? I did these in the last video, in the last vlog. Bonfire peach trees. They are underplanted with some daffodils. 
various pansies, some lettuce, and osteospermums. They've only been planted up for like three days, so there really isn't much to report with those. They're going to need some time to do some growing. And I talked about when I planted those up, they're really not going to do much growing anyways. And the daffodils, they'll finish up flowering, and that's about it. They'll be done. And the pansies, they won't do too much. The lettuce will do some growing. The osteospermums will do some growing, but for the most part, they're going to look pretty much like this, but things will change as the peaches fall. You get it. It's spring. Things are going to change. Things are just now starting to get growing. Look at the bayberry. I had got this pruned up last year, so there's a nice little archway to walk under here. I really enjoy this. It's been fun. I like being able to walk around underneath the bush. Not the most attractive plant I have out here, but I think it's worth it to have that little archway. And anything evergreen, I'm all for it. The bamboo. It looks okay. Not much to say about it. It was an experiment planting these out here last year in these containers. This one over here on the left has a lot more windburn, a lot more yellowy foliage than the other one, but they still look fine. They're not going to do much for a few more weeks, but they should start pushing out some new growth here pretty soon. This is another area that I want to just kind of wipe the slate clean with. I have all these trellises and arbors back here that just, I don't really use them anymore, so there's no reason to have them. And I think this would be a good spot to extend whatever hedging I put down there to have this right here. So I would like to fill it in this little window here to have some more privacy in this spot. The Washingtonia, I'm pretty sure it's dead. Can't say for sure, but it, it's not looking too hot. On the coldest temperatures that we had, I managed to like just barely get some heat cable thrown up over it, but I don't think that that was enough. I didn't think it would be enough when I did it, but I was like, well, I have to try something. And, uh, well, I don't know, time will tell, we will see. That was a plant that was supposed to go back to the greenhouse. If you don't know, I, have a lot of larger plants that go off to a company that stores large plants for you. The Washingtonia got too big. The ceiling's only so tall. So they said they didn't think they could take it, but they'd come back and then they never came back. I never heard from them again. Not really thrilled about that. The communication issues that went down with that palm tree, but it is what it is. I've decided no more big palm trees. I have some already. I still have a few queen palms that are off in storage. Those will be back in a month or so. But from now on, it's just, like Robolini's, Pygmy Date Palms, things that stay smaller because it's just, it's just such a shame when they get too big and then you just have to let them die. Like, I, don't, I don't like that. So I'm going to hold on to the ones I have until they get too big, the queen palms and those things. But in the future, it'll be palm trees that stay smaller or grow most slowly. You may have noticed I didn't spend much time talking about expected or anticipated projects for this garden bed that goes down and wraps around up to here. That's just because even though you can't tell right now, this garden bed's very full. There are a lot of perennials in here that just haven't popped up and done anything yet. I've had to remind myself when I've been online looking at plants and trying to plan things out and do some early plant shopping that there's not much space left to work with in here, which is great. I love a nice lush garden. I do want to always incorporate a few more evergreens, try and get a few more plants in every year for early season interest and the winter interest that would be the evergreens. But for the most part, there really isn't much room left to work with here. I suppose there are some projects, some things I want to get done for this area. Like I would like to come up with a designated area to keep the pool cleaning equipment. I'm tired of having the barrel there and I've talked about it for years. How I don't like the pool servicing stuff to be over there, those big nets and everything. So it would be nice to get that done. But as far as new plants go, there are some fun things coming this year to go in the garden, but not a lot of big major things for this area right here. There are still, there's some, I'm pretty excited about some of the plants that y'all are going to get to see here, hopefully the next month or two. But no big planting projects. That bed is full. It's done. And so am I. I'm starting to lose my voice. I've been trying to keep my voice kind of calm because the pollen is very high today. And when I talk a lot, when the pollen levels are high, I just whoo, lose my voice for like three or four days. But that is, that's about everything. Mostly just lots of messes to clean up. You know, I picked up in the middle of doing like three different projects and decided to film a video so I can have people tell me Things are messy and that's okay. They are, I'm aware. It's how things go this time of year. I was going to incorporate the house plants in the tropicals, which are all in the garage right there. This video has gotten fairly long though. So I will either start off the next video with a little house plant tour or just do something totally separate for the house plant and tropical lovers. Everything in there is doing fine. They're just hanging out. Just all the fun little pretty things you're seeing in whatever clips I'd laid over. They're just there and they're hanging out, waiting to come outside. They will be coming out when nighttime temperatures are steadily in the 50s and daytime temperatures are steadily in the 70s. Want to make sure that there's a reliable 
pattern of warmth before I bring them out. Oh, so pretty. These make me so happy. My favorite thing this year. Also the only thing I've done this year. Thanks for hanging out. Oh yeah, the pool's dirty because the filter's not on yet. That is all getting set up and turned on tomorrow. And then that big blue pool cover over there, that'll be gone. And I'll have a pathway to start moving those big pots over there and really get things rolling when that's out of the way. And then get that water cleared up. It's sanitary, but it's just, it's kind of nasty looking. Comment down below, say hi. What's going on with y'all's gardens? Fellow Zone Sixers, things just kind of in that in-between state of like, you're just starting to see the action and waiting for things to take off and get moving. That's where I am right now. Things are just starting to pop up. Things are just starting to get moving. Over the course of just a few weeks, things are going to start to look very different out here. And I cannot wait. So excited. All right, hope everybody's doing well, having a great day and a great life, and everything's just going absolutely beautifully for you. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.